So now I'm going to look at a little bit of math regarding fiscal policy, specifically taxation and revenue. So now what I'm going to talk about first is just a little bit of accounting. And so G is government spending and T is taxation. Now, regardless of why countries or governments tax, you can talk about promoting equality, you can talk about uh, reducing bad behavior like smoking, cigarette taxes. But if you're simply looking at raising revenue, you can say that tax revenue T will fund government spending G. And so if they're equal, G equals T, you'll have a balanced budget, that there's enough money coming in through taxes to pay for government expenditure. Now what if they're not equal? If tax revenue is greater than government spending, then you have extra money and that's a budget surplus. And if government spending is greater than taxes, then you have a need to borrow, and so that is a budget deficit. So those are the three accounting or equations that you might see when you talk about taxing and spending. Now this formula I like, although not every book covers it, tax revenue in dollars is a percentage of tax rate times the value of an item being taxed. You can look at an income tax where the, your salary is taxed at varying percentages. Sales tax varies from state to state, city to city. And you could have a percentage when you go shopping. It's actually different on food and other items. Clothing and food have different taxes for certain reasons. But that is all money coming in. And so this revenue simply says that the money comes in as a percentage of jobs, property, uh, sales, etc. All right. Now, this is a little more controversial. The Laffer curve talks about the rate and the base being sort of a cause and effect relationship. First, I'll talk about the other cause effect relationship. Sometimes governments set different taxes based on the, the amount of the item being taxed or the tax base. So, in other words, sometimes a larger base has a different tax rate than a smaller rate. And so you can think of incomes where people make a million dollars a year, they actually pay more than someone making $20,000 a year. Not only because they have more money to tax, but because the percentage on each dollar, especially at the top level, is actually a higher percent. So um, that's important to realize. The policymakers actually look at the tax base and change the tax rate accordingly. And so income tax, if the, rate, if the base goes up, your job gets more pay, your tax rate goes up. So we call that a progress of taxes. The base goes up, the thing being taxed goes up, then the rate goes up as a percentage. That is progressive. All right? um, if the rate goes down because the base goes up, that is regressive. In other words, you could have a lower income tax on richer people. So that would be a little bit more politically controversial. And now, that here I have a line over this meaning no change in the rate. A proportional tax means that everybody, regardless of the size of the job or the property or whatever, would, would be taxed at the same percentage. And so, as a little bit of math, if you say a tax rate of 10% times a tax base of $1,000, you would actually have revenue of $100. All right, so that would be how much money would be brought in. Now, if you say, well, what if tax rate, tax base goes up to 2000 if it were proportional tax, revenue would be 200. All right, but what would happen if you, let's say, raised the percentage because the base went up and you changed it to 20%? Now you would have $400 or one fifth. So, in other words, changing the rate because the base got higher would be a progressive tax. All right, so that's a change in the percentage based on the change in the base. All right, so property, larger houses have higher rates. Um, as I mentioned, job sales tax might be actually a proportional tax if, you know, Cook County, it could be 9.75%. Um, and then that would be for anything. You go to the shop and you spend $100 or you spend $50, it would actually be the same percentage. Now, food actually has a lower percentage. Sometimes it's zero in some areas because people need to eat and it's viewed that it's uh, a necessary good and in some places it's not taxed at all. So and that's a reason to, to keep taxes on low-income people lower because more of your budget, more of your income goes toward food, and so that would actually be a progressive tax. All right. Now, one thing I'm going to say is that a pr proportional tax is not always flat. So if you think of it, a car registration might be $100. It's $100 regardless of rich or poor. But what happens if you have a person with $100,000 income versus one, say, $10,000 income? Now, if you were to take this as a percentage of income, $100 divided by $100,000 is a lower percentage. It's actually 1 1,000th or 0.1%, right? But now if you have a, so this is 0.1% of income, right? Now, if you were to say, well, what if it's $100 over 10,000, right? Now, if you say 100 over 10,000, now it is 1%. 
So 1 over 100 is 1%. 1 and so it's actually, if you think of it not as everybody pays $100 for a car registration, it's fair to all. That's one argument. But the other argument is if you say, well, make it a percentage of income. Right. Then you would say, well, actually, poor people pay a higher percent. And so this is a little bit controversial because people argue about wealthier people paying more taxes. People talk about proportional taxes or flat taxes. Um, but regardless of that, the Laffer curve is actually even more controversial. Uh, generally speaking, Arthur Laffer was a conservative economist who drew this, uh, I believe, on a cocktail napkin or, or as the story goes. But it's a relationship that says if you raise the tax rate, the tax base goes down. In other words, if you raise income taxes, people will actually uh, work less because they don't want to make less money and work hard for less money. Or you might have people le taking their money offshore or leaving the country with their money or hiring lawyers. And so actually less money comes in if you raise rates. And conversely, more money comes in if you cut taxes. So a lot of times it's controversial because it's, a, it's sort of this idea that cutting taxes will bring more money in, even though this formula shows that that wouldn't happen. So again, if you lower the tax rate to zero, tax revenue goes to zero. But this says actually the base will go up if you lower the rate. Right? It's used as a justification to cut taxes. So what does this mean? First of all, I draw it this way. Sometimes it's drawn sideways. But if you look at it, if you have 0% tax rate, you will bring in 0% revenue. So revenue is on this axis and the rate is on the horizontal axis. So 0% tax rate brings in 0%, $0 revenue. Now, if you go to 100, Likewise, if I would have 100% income tax, no one would work, and nobody disputes that. And so there's also zero here, so there's zero revenue. But if you raise rates, at some point it turns around. And so raising tax rates will bring in more revenue until you hit some sort of optimal point, some, some peak. And then it starts to turn around. And so the thing about this is that what percentage does this happen at? Now, in the 1960s, the U.S. government under President Kennedy actually cut the top tax rate from like the 90th percent, 90 percent. And so that was thought to have been able to stimulate the economy. But right now, the tax ta top tax rate is in the high 30s. And so if you're over here, in the, if you're in the low range of taxes, cutting tax rates will actually lower tax revenue. So the U.S. did it when rates were extremely high, and it might have worked. But if taxes are already low, it might have the opposite effect. Likewise, countries such as Russia with capital flight, people don't want to put their money in the country. They can avoid paying taxes, put their money overseas. Having lower tax rates make it easier to collect money might actually bring money into the country because lower tax rates are more likely to be paid than higher tax rates. And so some countries with tax collection issues might be able to lower the tax rate to bring in revenue. But the question is, is what is this percentage? The U.S. is probably over here, and so cutting ta tax rates will probably only lower revenue. So that's the Laffer curve. So I draw it on this axis. Sometimes you'll see it curved like that. But again, it's important to understand that, that sort of, that's an idea that a lot of policymakers prescribe to, whether or not you agree with it or not. But so, so that's, this is a relationship where the rate actually causes the base, where this is the cause and the base is the effect. This is the opposite. This is where the base causes the rate. So policymakers will look at different items uh, and actually charge higher percentages on higher incomes. So those are the three types of math in the fiscal policy that usually I look at. The surplus, balanced budget, and deficit. I look at this formula for tax revenue. And then finally, I discuss the Laffer curve. And I talk about it as more controversial, but still important to learn. So those, those are the three issues that you might see further in macro.